Hello, it's Lord Slar here, coming back at you with another video, and the topic of today's is the 10th planet versus the moon base. So since my last one of these versus videos went down quite well, I thought I'd do another, as I quite enjoyed doing it. And I've chosen to do these two episodes in particular, because one, they're generally considered to be quite close in quality, two, they're the first two Cybermen stories, and three, in my how to do a good Cybermen story, whatever it was called, uh, I said that these were the two stories which did the Cybermen the best. Not necessarily my favourites, but the ones which portrayed the Cybermen the best. So I thought it'd be quite fun to compare these two and see which one was the best stories. It's often an area of debate, so without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first category we've got today is plot, and is unfortunately an area where the 10th planet suffers quite a lot. Uh, the problem with it is that the plot just kind of happens and goes completely over the characters' heads. They have very little input on the outcome and what goes on in between, and all of the effect that they have is very minor, which kind of leaves it feeling a bit barren, a bit empty, and not really done very well. This isn't helped by the fact that Hartnell was ill for two episodes and was off, but even then they don't struggle to fill the gap since, well, the Doctor didn't do much in the story anyway, nor did the companions, nor did the people in the base. Things just kind of happened, a bit like in The Forest of Night with that respect, apart from, fortunately, the other areas of the story were interesting enough to carry it, unlike in The Forest of Night, which was just a boring mess. So overall, The Tenth Planet really flops when it comes to plot. It's not a bad plot by any means, and has lots of interesting features to it, but it's just not constructed well for a Doctor Who story at all. So the moon base's plot is a lot better. It's by no means the most amazing thing I've ever seen, but it's a pretty good example of just how to do a solid plot which functions. I mean, for one, the characters actually have an input on the outcome of the story, which, you know, is really important for shows like Doctor Who, and for most shows, and, you know, most fiction in general, some things work without much character input, but... That's a very specific thing he talked about here, and Doctor Who is certainly not one where that works, so this one doesn't go for that, and that's good. It still does have some of the scientific goofiness that... To conclude, plot easily goes to the moon base. The Tenth Planet barely puts up a fight here, because it just does it wrong. Yeah, it, do it does that whole thing of not getting the characters properly involved in the plot, and that's just a really bad mistake, and I don't know why they did that. So, moon base wins this category. So on the characters now, the 10th planet has relatively few characters, or at least relatively few that are particularly memorable. I have to say my favourite out of all of the supporting cast is General Cutler. He's a brilliant, brazen, shouty arsehole, and is a pleasure to watch whenever he's on screen, especially when he's having a face-off with Hartnell's Doctor. It's extremely entertaining, and you couldn't have asked for any better, and the, the actor plays him perfectly and brings a lot of gravitas to the role, and he's done really well. Another character I quite liked was Barkley. Uh, he's nothing particularly special, but he was enjoyable to watch, and I thought he was quite a good character. As for the rest, they kind of fall flat and are pretty one-dimensional. There is one one which sticks out for all the wrong reasons, and that's the Italian guy from episode one. If you've watched, you'll know exactly why. It's... <laughs> Oh, he's very funny. Uh, as for the main cast, they're not done too well. Uh, ben and Polly do have a few good bits here and there, but unfortunately Hartnell isn't utilised well. That's partially because he wasn't there for episode 3 because he was ill, and partially because the script hasn't particularly wrote him very well, mainly because, you know, you expect the Doctor to be having an impact on the story, whereas, obviously, in as I explained in the previous category, the Tenth Planet really doesn't have the characters impacting on the story too much, so that's kind of the problem. However, in the Moon Base, the main cast are actually utilised really well. Sure, Jamie isn't that much and is just knocked out for half the episode, but that's forgivable by the fact that he wasn't actually going to be in the story when they were writing it. Ben and Polly have some great moments in this one, and I'd probably say it's Polly's best story overall, as she has quite a lot of good things to do, and I particularly like the Polly cocktail scene in episode 3. Uh, as for the Doctor, he's brilliant in this. This is the first episode I feel Troughton's really got a grip to the role, and is all credit to Morris Barry, at, at least what I can gather from watching the documentary, who managed to curve his silliness he'd had in the past three stories, as he was always trying to get away from doing all sorts of crazy stuff, which was amusing, but you really felt like he was definitely the Doctor at this point. And I really liked that, and his performance was brilliant, and he had that brilliant speech in uh, episode 2, and it all worked really well. As for the supporting characters, there's nobody as good as General Cutler, but most of them 
aren't flat. They're pretty enjoyable. At least the ones which have more than a few lines. Like uh, Benoit and Hobson are a lot of fun to watch. As for the other ones, you know, not not a whole lot there particularly. But that's mainly because they don't speak a whole lot. But, oh well, I'd say that's about it for characters. So I think that's another easy win for the moon base. Sure, the Tenth Planet has General Cutler, who is one of my favourite supporting characters. However, the rest of them really fall flat, especially the TARDIS crew, whereas in the moon base, they're all done really well. They're not horrible in the Tenth Planet by any means, and they're passable, and they work well, and even have some good scenes. But I just think they're done a whole lot better in the moon base on the whole. So now onto the villains, which I think we can consider the Cybermen in these two stories. The Cybermen in the Tenth Planet are portrayed absolutely brilliantly, as I've already explained many times. The costume design is brilliant, you can still see some of the human bits and outline of faces covered by surgical tape. It's really creepy and really hammers home the point that they are like us, just with so many bits replaced by robotics that they've lost what it meant to be human. That's the point of the Cybermen. And and this is the design which gets it most, for sure, is even though it was absolute hell for the actors. The Zenmen themselves have plenty of good scenes, but most of them are in episode 2, and after episode 2, I think they kind of go a bit downhill for the most part, uh, and just more or less become fodder uh, whenever the story wants to shoot something, or, you know, show the grand scale of the story. And they're alright in episode 4, but in episode 3, they're, they're just a bit of a joke. Uh, and so, while they are portrayed really well on the whole, they have a couple of moments not so good. However, in the moon base, it could be argued that they're portrayed better, despite the inferior designs in terms of fear factor. And the point of the matter is, they're just a lot more proactive in the moon base, because in the Tenth Planet, they didn't do a whole lot. I mean, don't get me wrong, they were done well when they were on screen, but they basically just kind of came down to Earth and got shut up. You don't really see them themselves doing too much. I mean, they do a bit of killing occasionally, but, you know, they're pretty docile for the most part. Whereas the ones in the moon base are really sneaky, really cunning, and they have all sorts of great lines, like the one where, don't leave this room or you will be converted. I mean, that's scary. That's better than the threat of death. And, and that was a brilliant line, in my opinion. And also the one there, when they're talking to the human, saying, your only stupid human brains like yours would have been fooled, and then talking about emotions as a weirdness, or in the novel, I believe, it even says that we're retarded because we have emotions, which makes sense. From their perspective, the kind of things we do because of our emotions would be so strange that it's out of the ordinary, it's on the spectrum, which, that's done really well. That's the Cybermen being portrayed better. They're doing a whole lot more in the moon base, despite the designs not being quite as scary. Don't get me wrong, they're still pretty good designs, but they're not as good as the Tenth Planet. But overall, I think you've really got to give it to the moon base on the terms of villains. So now on a direction, which is a much simpler affair than the past few, just by the fact that the moon base and the Tenth Planet have direction as good as each other. I can't really distinct one from another, as much as I want to say that the moon base is better. But I just couldn't find any examples to kind of prove that. I mean, they've both got some really good moments with direction, like the battle in the snow at the end of episode 1 for the Tenth Planet, and the slow reveal of the Cybermen uh, in the hospital bed in episode 2, they're all done really well. There's lots of great moments of direction like that. It's nothing outstanding, mind you, but there's just nothing to really put one episode ahead of another. So I think we've kind of got to call this a tie. Although I will give Morris Barry credit for the, being the first director to keep Trout under control, as the past few stories he'd gone a bit silly, which I think they're pretty harmless and pretty funny, but I know the audience at the time didn't like them, and his performance in the moon base is his best so far uh, out of the first four stories and probably his best in season four except for maybe Eve of the Daleks I'm not quite sure I'd probably need to rewatch that story but oh well direction is a tie so now on the pacing which like the last category is relatively simple they're both paced pretty well there's not a moment where I feel particularly bored in either episode and they've both got a nice build up a nice reveal and a nice climax it all works pretty well however I think I've got to give the edge to the moon base just because there's a lot more going on in that story because in the 10th planet you know the plot just kind of goes over the heads of all the characters and there is a few dodgy moments because of that, and I feel the moon base does pacing a lot stronger, and it does have more to work with, which makes it work a lot more effectively. And I feel like the build-up and reveal in the moon base is a lot better than it was in the 10th planet, mainly because of a few silly bits uh, to do with the science, mainly. And also, 
it just isn't built up as well. So I'm going to say the pacing in the moon base is slightly better than this 10th planet. There's not much in it, but it is better. So now onto the fun fact here. This is another pretty hard one to award due to the fact that they're pretty close in terms of this too. I mean, both stories have a lot of fun things going for them. Like the really interesting concepts introduced with the Cybermen in the 10th planet for one. And also General Cutler who is an absolute riot whenever he's being a fucking bastard to people. Because I love bastards in fiction. That's just... It's my fictional kink, more or less. Uh, not in a sexual way, though. Although that did kind of sound sexual, but oh well. Let's move past it. The moon base, however, I think is more fun just because it has way more interesting moments and way more, like, just cool bits, more or less. Like, for example, when the Cyberman's bleeding out that horrible foam stuff. Like, I don't know, I like a bit of gore, and that was pretty well done. And there's quite a few funny moments in the moon base, whereas I find there isn't too many in the 10th planet, and they are quite funny, to be fair, mainly due to Troughton being an amazing comedic actor. So I think, again, I'm going to have to give the edge to the moon base, but there's not much in it. So I think the clear winner here is the moon base. It's no disrespect to the 10th planet because it did nearly win a lot of the categories. It was very close, but just the problem with the 10th planet is because its plot isn't that strong and isn't that intricate most of the other elements kind of fall apart just a little bit enough to mean that even though it's close in quality to the moon base it's never going to be better at least in my eyes just because there isn't as much going on it isn't as well developed a script and despite its interesting moments i think the moon base definitely has the edge over it and as I said, even though it's close, I don't think I'm ever going to consider the 10th planet better than the moon base. But if you disagree, tell me why in the comments. I'd be very interested to hear, and I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you back next time in another one.